Hello everyone, my name is Cynthia Pippins and there we'll be joined by Valerie, Whitney, and Nana. We're going to talk about postpartum depression theory. Um, the postpartum depression theory was developed by um, Cheryl Beck, who graduated from Western Connecticut State University in 1970. She started working at Yale New Haven Hospital on postpartum and newborn nursery. She received her master's degree in maternal newborn nursing in 1972 and earned a doctorate in nursing from Boston University in 1982. Um, the postpartum depression theory is a mid-range theory. Mid-range theories are more precise. They answer specific nursing practice questions. They specify factors such as age group, family <coughs> situations, health conditions, location of the patient, and nursing actions. Postpartum theory is classified as a mid-range theory because it specifically addresses women in the postpartum period. It was developed to address postpartum women and mood disorders. Um, practice experience that uh, Ms. Beck had was she started re her research career studying laboring women and their responses to fetal monitoring. She served as a consultant on numerous research projects and she was awarded the Distinguished Researcher of the Year from Eastern Nursing Research Society in 1999. Um, she also wrote over a hundred journal articles. She served on editorial boards for many nursing journals. And she was a member of the advisory committee of the Donahue Medical Research Foundation in Connecticut. Um, theoretical sources that she used, Jean Watson's theory of caring. She believed that caring is the heart of nursing. Paul Francis Calazzi's qualitative phenomenology research method was basically the study of the phenomena of postpartum depression in um, women. Glazer, Strauss, and Hutchinson's grounded theories was used to help identify key elements in the postpartum depression and their relationship to each other. Um, she also used Central and Discool's earthquake model. Basically, a fault line was described as a biological and life results developed by chemical changes and stressors. And Childbirth was one of those things that could actually push the woman over the edge and cause the earthquake. Um, Robert Gable was actually helped assist Ms. Beck in developing the postpartum depression screening scale. Empirical evidence, basically there was, she only found two qualitative studies that offered information about this study. Most of the information for her theory she actually did herself and it was actually come from other disciplines. Um, one of the things that she did uh, that started the postpartum theory was teetering on the edge with loss of control, which was a substantive theory by Ms. Beck. Primary sources, um, some of the things that kind of started all this off for her, she wrote a journal article on teetering on the edge, a substantive theory of postpartum depression in 1993. She also wrote a book about postpartum depression, case studies, research, and nursing care in 1999. And just to kind of show that it's just an ongoing process, she has another book, it's an exemplar, Teetering on the Edge, a Continually Emerging Theory of Postpartum Depression in 2007. Hi, I'm Valerie Boyd. The basic considerations of the theory. Postpartum depression is only one concept within a larger understanding of mental health and giving birth. Other related issues include maternity blues, and postpartum psychosis, postpartum obsessive compulsive disorder, and postpartum onset panic disorder, which are other mood disorders related to giving birth. The predominant symptoms of postpartum depression revolve around mental illness. Many women suffer from extreme sadness, anxiety, and irritability, which are common signs of depression. There are also real physical symptoms to accompany the mental depression, such as extra fatigue, disrupted sleeping, reduction in sexual desire, and changes in weight, whether it's gains or losses. Beck outlined in her original theoretical foundation a number of risk factors that may potentially be linked to higher incidences of postpartum depression. Such factors include the presence of prenatal depression and anxiety, self-esteem levels both before and after pregnancy, stress over child care issues once the baby is born, and any other stress related to the way the patient lives her life, the level of social support the new mother has, marital status, as well as the status of the pregnancy in terms of whether or not it was planned. Provide preventative, uh, prevention for, 
prevention for new mothers to be is a good consideration of the theory. Early recognition of risk factors by utilizing the postpartum depression predictors inventory, which was later revised into the PDPIR. Um, the known risk factors were categorized based on their strength and correlation to PPD. And here the research suggest, suggests that the strongest predictors of PPD are the experience of depression and anxiety during pregnancy or a previous depressive illness. So what is PDPIR? It consists of 13 risk factors related to PPD. There are guide questions for each of the 13 predictors that clinicians can use during an interview process, and that's all included. PDPIR has four new risk factors, such as self-esteem, marital status, socioeconomic status, and unplanned unwanted pregnancy. Ideally, this checklist should be completed each trimester and until one year after delivery. I'm Nana Sresta and I'll be showing the schematic for her theory. Um, so for the postpartum depression theory, we put her concept into a process. So she has all these concepts within the theory and we, uh, we divide it into the process. So the first one um, starts with the presence of significant uh, predictor or risk factors. Then we go to the symptoms of uh, the postpartum depression. And then according to that symptom and the history, we go to the diagnosis where she had two concepts. One was postpartum mood dis disorders and the other one was loss of control. So for the first one, we have postpartum depression significant predictors or risk factors. So we divided it um, back into the four uh, categories. One was maternal self, so whatever history with the mom. Uh, history of prenatal depression, prenatal anxiety, history of depression, maternal blues, um, self-esteem or if the uh, pregnancy is unplanned or unwanted. The next one is family and life, um, marital satisfaction and marital status. Socioeconomic, what are the life stresses or social support. And the other one is infant care related, um, childcare stress or infant temperament. For the symptoms, um, we have all these different categories. One was sleeping and uh, eating disturbances. Inability to sleep, even the bear child. Whenever child is asleep, still the mom cannot go to sleep. Um, tossing and turning, loss of appetite, un unable to eat, uh, anxiety and insecurity, over attentive towards the child, uh, feeling of needing to pacing, uh, feeling of insecurity and overwhelmed about the child. Uh, for emotional liability, unstable emotions, out of control, crying for no reason irritability, anger, and fear, uh, mental confusion, inability to concentrate, focus, or make any decisions, uh, unable to regulate their own thoughts, uh, unable to identify who they really are, they are kind of lost within themselves, uh, guilt and shame, um, perception of poorly performing mother, negative thought about the infant, and suicidal thought, thoughts of harming self. So with that history uh, and the uh, factors and also the symptoms, she developed these two concepts, is the postpartum mood disorder and loss of control. For postpartum mood disorders, we have all these concepts, uh, postpartum depression, which is a non-psychotic major depressive disorder, maternity blues, it's uh, melancholy and mood swings, uh, postpartum psychosis, hallucination, delusions, agitation, inability to sleep, bizarre and irrational behavior, postpartum OCD where there is repetitive intrusive thoughts of harming the baby, fear of being left alone with the infant, and hypervigilance in protecting the infant. And the last one, postpartum onset panic disorder where there is an acute onset of anxiety, fear, rapid breathing, heart palpitations, and sense of uh, impending doom. And for the loss of control, also tearing on the aid, um, encountering terror, horrifying anxiety attacks, enveloping fogginess and relentless um, obsessive thinking, dying of self, alarming unrealness, attempt to self-destruction, isolating self, um, struggling to survive, battling the system, soulless at support group and praying for relief, and regaining control, unpredictable transition, uh, guarded recovery and moaning cross time.
logical form, middle range theory and grounded theory approach utilizes inductive and deductive logic. Inductive moves from particular to general, and deductive moves from general to particular. Limitations. Limited information was a major limitation with the theory of postpartum depression. Lack of information leaves room for an additional for additional contributors to join the research and enhance the knowledge of the theory. Beck's theory was crucial in helping establish a stronger foundation for dealing with postpartum depression, both in clinical practice and theoretical conception. Nursing research as a discipline can help set trends for clinical practice in recognizing and treating postpartum depression. From research, modern nurse practitioners can help spot early risk factors for signs of potential PPD thus empowering care strategies to help accommodate certain psychological needs and strengthen a new mother's coping skills and quality of life. Hi, I'm Whitney Guerrero, and I'm going to talk to you about the implications for advanced nursing practice. Um, prevention is key. According to Beck's theory, a level of prevention framework is outlined to show that PPD can be prevented via both identification and alleviation of risk factors throughout the prepartum period. Early identification of PPD could allow for early treatment and reestablishment of an optimal level of health for both mother and infant. If PPD is left undiagnosed, it can adversely affect the mother's relationship with the infant as well as lead to long-term long emotional issues for the infant. It should be every advanced practice registered nurse's priority to maintain optimal health, optimal health status for all patients and it is a very difficult time for the mother and infant when PPD becomes an issue for the postpartum mother. The first step to prevention of PPD is to identify those women who are at high risk for development of this mood disorder. It is clinically significant that advanced practice registered nurses know that for a diagnosis of PPD to be made, the postpartum mother must exhibit five or more of the following symptoms for a time period of at least two weeks. Psychomotor retardation or agitation, hypersomnia or insomnia, fatigue, feelings of guilt or worthlessness, appetite changes, suicidality, and decreased concentration. According to Beck, her description of PPD identifies the mood disorder as a thief who steals motherhood. One of the major challenges with this destructive mood disorder is early recognition. It is very pertinent that advanced practice registered nurses be aware of the risk factors that are significantly associated with PPD, such as women who have a history of emotional instability, including poor self-esteem, low income, history of PPD, and satisfaction with educational level. The PDPIR includes the 13 predictors of PPD, and I list them here, um, prenatal depression, child care stress, life stress, social support, prenatal anxiety, marital satisfaction, history of previous depression, infant temperament, maternity blues, self-esteem, socioeconomic status, marital status, and unwanted um, or unplanned pregnancy. It is important that advanced practice registered nurses teach the mothers as well as their family members about the signs and symptoms of PPD. This can be done via pamphlets, support groups, you can give them telephone numbers of mental health professionals that specialize in postpartum mood disorders. It is also pertinent that advanced practice registered nurses provide realistic expectations as well as support for the mothers. Therefore, the clinical implications of Beck's theory would include the ability of the advanced practice registered nurse to identify these predictors and risk factors in order to provide effective treatment for this mood disorder. A hypothetical clinical scenario of this theory, um, Beck defines PPD as being a non-psychotic major depressive disorder in which the distinguishing diagnostic criteria can be seen as early as four weeks postpartum. So the hypo hypothetical clinical scenario in which one would demonstrate the application of Beck's theory of PPD would be when postpartum mothers come back for their six-week follow-up appointment or whatever the, you know, the follow-up appointment may be, and at that follow-up appointment, Beck's PDSS could be utilized to determine whether the postpartum mothers are experiencing PPD in order to identify and properly treat the disorder. According to Beck's theory, early identification of PPD can be achieved via careful screening and can then be effectively treated. Similarly, the PDPIR could be used before or during the pregnancy or at the woman's initial checkups to determine the risk factors for um, or predictors of PPD. 
So in summary, the um, Beck's theory of PPD is a middle range theory that utilizes inductive and deductive logic for its development. Beck has majorly contributed to the identification and early treatment of PPD through her research in, P in PPD screening tools. As previously mentioned, she has been involved in many research projects as well as served as a consultant on many research projects. If PPD is left undiagnosed, it can adversely affect the mother's relationship with the infant as well as lead to long-term emotional issues for the infant. As previously mentioned, the clinical implications of Beck's theory would include the ability of the advanced practice registered nurse to identify these predictors and risk factors in order to provide effective care and treatment for this mood disorder. Here are our references. Thank you very much.